so good everyone welcome back for another fly time tutorial so uh this this video is on a uh on an old pattern um, so what we're tying on this one is the hackle hopper so this is a pattern that's uh out of um out of a book this book angling in australia and elsewhere written in 1921 by uh this guy howard Jocelyn. So this pattern is a uh, is intended to be a, obviously a hopper style pattern, um, and uh, this book is actually sort of really, you know, sort of generally acknowledged to be one of the first books that had um, Australian fly patterns in them. So patterns that were designed in Australia uh, way back in the nineteen twenties. So we're doing this one here now. This is about all you get in the book. You get a color plate, and I'll just move it over here. So number four, up up in here, is um is what we're doing, and uh, you get a color plate and a brief description of some materials, and that's about it. So there's not a lot of information floating around on this fly. Um, it's a fairly straightforward fly to tie, and it's sort of unique in some ways, particularly when you look at the materials. Um, Works uh works pretty well, it has it stays like most patterns you know it's not not all the time but it's uh it, it does its job when it needs to do its job. I do it in a few different styles. Um, I do it with a uh, a couple of different hackle colours and change the body slightly. Um, so obviously this one in a, uh, a bit of an olive hackle and, and a more of a greeny olive body, and then uh, and then this one with a golden olive hackle and a bit more of a yellowy sort of a body. But uh, but the one we're going to try today is the, well, I guess you could say the the original version of it. All right. So it's um pretty straightforward and we'll still sort of get on into it. The, um, oh, forgot the thread, so that's always handy. So the, uh, the hook I'm using is a Dohuku 301 in size 12, uh, dry fly hook. Now you could tie this in, um, you know, in ten, maybe even eight, um, but uh, but I usually do it in twelve. Um, seems to work alright, and um, I guess it just depends on what sort of size hoppers you prefer to sort of have, or you have around the place. So that's the hook. The thread I'm using is some just some brown silk. This is YLI silk. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do now, the body on this needs to be fairly sort of large, but you do need to leave room for a couple of hackles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in about a third of the way down the shank, thereabouts, quarter of the third of the way down the shank, catch in my thread, and then just bring that down all the way down to the bend. Just before they get to the bend, I'm going to trim away some of the waste here. And, and then just bring the thread around. And I'm just gonna come very slightly around the bend and then back up, just so I've got a nice firm point there to tie on the tail. So the tail on the fly is actually, technically it's this so uh, ball bristle, right? Um, in claret or red. Um, now, if you don't have ball bristle or you can't get hold of any, then I would probably try um, some sort of claret um, coloured fibre, you know, hip cock hackle or something along these lines, um, something like something like that. But it is sort of a really dark colour. So I'm just going to come in with ball bristles now. The tail, I tied the tail in about the length of the body, or length of the whole shank, I should say. So it's about here. So I'm just going to catch that in with a turn. Once they decide to play the game, there you go. A couple of turns just to secure them just check the length make sure you're happy it's probably a little bit too long just bring that back a little bit okay so tail caught in now before i trim all that off i'm, I'm going to catch in the body material so the body on the fly uses natural raffia which is obviously a, a leaf you know a, a natural product um, and what you want is a strip of raffia that's about 
sort of three or four mil in diameter, sorry, in width, I guess, nice thin strip. And you don't want to go too thick, otherwise it becomes awkward to wrap. And you don't want to go too thin, otherwise it can become too fragile. Now, raffia itself can be a bit of a bit of a pain to work with. So what I find is that if I lick my lips and wet it, it softens it up a little bit, makes it a bit more malleable and a bit more compliant when you're tying. So I'm just going to run some run some moisture through that raffia. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to catch that in about the, you know, about sort of half the length of the body. It's not super critical. You're going to dub over the top of this shortly. So once I've caught that in, I'm just going to continue up. And then just before I finish the end of the body, I'm going to come in and trim away my ball bristle. Now, you can leave that. You end up with a fair bit. Um, you know, and, then, and leave it. It's useful for other things and legs and stuff like that. So I'm just going to come up and I'm going to finish tying in the raffia. Come back down, securing it all in. And I'm going to bring the thread all the way back down to the base of the tail. So the underbody for this fly is this material, which is K-POC. Um, and it looks a little bit like sort of raw cotton, and I guess in a way it is. And K-POC is, is the fibers out of a, of a uh, seed pod, particular seed pod. The good thing about, about K-POC is, is that it's hydrophobic. It has a natural oil in it. Um, it's really, really light, really, really fine. Um, hydrophobic. They used to use it for uh, buoyancy and things like life jackets and and stuff like that. And it's even still used today in for stuffing in pillows and these sorts of things. So you can buy it. It's not terribly expensive, um, and a mile, you get miles of it. It lasts a real long time. It's difficult to colour, but you can buy coloured ones. But in this particular pattern, all we're doing is using. Um, the natural one. So this is the original tie. If you can't get K-POC, you don't have K-POC, then really you're just after some fine dubbing, um, whatever that may be. And it doesn't really matter what the color is because you're going to cover it over anyway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tease the K-POC in and and dub a noodle onto, onto the thread and then tighten that up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to form the the body of the of the fly and so I'm just going to go backwards and forwards I guess for the length of that body just building up what I would like as the form of the body now it, you know you're building you're tying a hopper here so you want some substance to the body but then you're also going to cover it so if you make it too thick it becomes awkward to try and cover it with the with the raffia, um, but if it's too thin, then it's really sort of not doing what you want it to do. So once I'm sort of comfortable that I've got the shape of the probably need a little bit more at the front there, the shape I want for the body, then. What we'll do is we'll just we'll just run the thread through it just to sort of help form it a bit. So a little bit tight. There we go. And so we'll just come backwards and forwards a little bit, and that'll help lock the capoc down and and really sort of form the body. And we go back to the front. It's just in front of the body here. So then the next step is obviously running up our raffia. Now I'm just going to re moisten it. A bit just so I make sure it's nice and supple and then I'm just going to wrap that raffia in over wrapping turns from the front uh, sorry from the back to the front now you just got to take your time with this it's, it can very easily split um, and tear so you just take your time and we build up a body back to the front of the cat to the where we finish dubbing the K-POC. A couple of turns to secure. And then we can trim this away. So this is the, the body done. I'll just tidy up a little bit there. So what you end up with then is this raffia covered body. Straight fibers in there. 
and once it dries it'll tighten up a little bit and and um, and it's really sort of fairly fairly sturdy okay so that's the body done the next step then is the hackle so obviously golden pheasant tippet is what we're after um, what you look for is is a fairly well marked and nice colored tippet hackle um, and one of the smaller ones is probably well I guess it's relative to the size of the fly you're tying um, for 12s I usually go for some of the smaller ones so I have my tip hackle and I'm just going to pull away some of the fibers at the base and some of the ones that aren't fairly nicely marked or colored up so I'm just left with with these I come over my hackle pliers I'm just going to try and find the middle here and then tease those fibers back and you can sort of fill around a little bit with this and tease them back and straighten them up so now that I've got my tip I'm going to come in and I'm going to catch in that tip immediately behind the raffia wind that down secure it and then come back up a little bit trim away those fibers at the front so I'm tying this hackling by the tip I've secured it in and I've come back up a little bit to where I want and stop my thread about where I want this hackle to sort of finish and from here I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers and pick that up and then I'm just going to draw these tippet fibers up and back and then wrap this hackle just taking my time making sure the fibers where you can stay to the back and then I'm going to keep moving rolling this forward until I pretty much get back to the thread now you want to use all of it so you know it's fairly well hackled fly and a couple of turns to capture that turn to lock it down and turn over the front just to relock it and then come in and trim away the stem so from here I'm just going to carry on down to the eye and back up to the hackle and then that just tidies up that front and start setting the setting the fly up for the last material so the last hackle is a partridge hackle. Now you want a fairly decent sized one and, and something with some good marking on it. And uh, and all we're gonna do here is we're gonna tie it in by the tip. So I'll just come in and capture the tip with my hackle pliers and draw these fibers back until I'm happy that I've got the start point for the tip. Now I'm gonna use all that hackle, so don't be shy. Uh, with it you don't have to trim it and you want some length in the in the partridge anyway so I'm just going to capture that and I'm going to come in I'm going to trim away this tip and leave myself a small point here to tie in so I'm going to catch that in directly in front of the golden pheasant and I'm just going to secure that down come back down to the eye and then back up just shy so that I can define where my finish point's going to be. So with my hackle pliers, I'm going to come in, pick up the hackle, and again, as you would with any soft hackle, draw those fibers back and then just wrap this partridge all the way forward. Just taking our time. Partridge can be a little bit um delicate I guess in the stem so you just take your time we don't need to worry too much about fibers running forward we, we can pull those back later but as sort of neatly as possible and we use all our partridge up and we come over with a turn and two just to secure that partridge stem turn in front turn behind just to lock it all down so from here, 
let's come in and trim away this stem and then I'm just going to build up a tapered head with several turns and then come in with my whip finisher now normally I'd use some wax on this I haven't got wax handy so uh, two or three turns to whip finish make sure that's firm and then, then another couple just to just just to be sure, right up against the uh, the hackle itself. Take up the tension on that, and then we can come away. We can trim away our thread, and that is Jocelyn's hackle hopper tied. Now this is a wet and dry fly. He lists it as a wet and dry fly, so I'm guessing basically. You know, it's, it's like sort of most soft hackles. If you, you know, you don't put any floating or anything on it, you just fish it sort of, you know, let it get wet and it becomes a wet. Um, you know, cast it, a few false casts and it'll dry out and it'll start to float or at least sit in the surface. And that's the uh, hackle hopper. Um, I actually really like it. I reckon it looks pretty, um, pretty, pretty cool with the little tippets on it. Um, and like I said, it's been a productive fly here and there. 100 year old fly, still doing the jerk, still doing its, uh, still doing its job. All right, team, thanks for watching. Um, if you try this, hopefully it works for you. Let me know if it does. Take care, tight lines.